on the part of the residential area, I can get back on the microphone and not get more letters from you all. So Harry Weiss, a very preservation minded architect, was not just a preservation guy. He also designed these four cool townhouses over here on the right hand side called the River Cottages that opened in 1990. Now, their design will look sort of like silver, so only one of them has ever come up on the market again. One of them listed and sold for a couple million a few years ago. And I love that it happened because because of the real estate listing, we finally got to see pictures of what they look like on the inside, which I had always wondered about. And based on the photos, I get the distinct impression that Harry Weiss and his staff were watching a lot of Pee Wee's Playhouse in those days. But where were we all? Now, uh, there's a nice specifically to look like the sailboats and scooters that used to sail to this plot of land called Wolf Point over here on the left. This new apartment tower is called Wolf Point West. When River Bend over here was built, these guys had the best skyline view in the city. Now they have the best view of Wolf Point West in the city. A couple of them tried to sue over that, though it didn't get very far. Now exactly why they called this Wolf Point is kind of lost to history now. Probably just a reference to the fact that there were so many wolves in there. Oh, Back in the 1840s, they used to have a holiday. Every year they would oh, shut down all the businesses one day in the winter so everybody could help chase wolves out of the woods and out into the ice on the left. It was a holiday not unlike whacking day or weasel stomping day, which was still celebrated in a couple of small towns. At least according to the cartoons. Is this just a speedway playing chicken with him? Yeah, it's As a lot of what's called contextualism here, a little shout outs to the environment around it. Curves right along with the curve of the river. Of the two colors of glass, at least one usually matches the color of the water. Circular vents down at the bottom match the circular vents in the next building over. Octagon shaped support columns match the octagons over and across the river in the merchandise bar here, which we'll cover on the way back. Now, this one is uh, the New Bean building is probably best known around the country now for being the building where Ferris Bueller's dad was in Ferris Bueller's day off. And somehow thought he was going to get a home at 5.30. And Cameron's house is in Highland Park. There's no way he's getting to Highland Park at 5.30. I want to write a whole other movie called Ferris Bueller's Dad's Commutes. I love like rocket launchers, grenades, secret passages, probably the Russian mafia. But you don't see what you're thinking, Peter, are you ready to duck a lot? You're going to be going under some bridges? we got the river walk is in effect over here on the right hand side. Now, they're working on building the, I'm extending that all the way down to Chinatown and maybe even beyond that eventually. It goes alongside Wacker Drive. A Wacker Drive is kind of an anomaly among Chicago streets. Most of them are laid out on the nice neat bridge system. Uh, Wacker is kind of in a horseshoe shape that goes around the loop. And uh, just to make it more confusing for the driver, there's an upper Wacker and a lower Wacker. Now, having a pile of a pile of custom-tailored union suits that cost about 20 bucks a pair in 1920s money. Now I can't trace him to this building on the right here, the LaSalle Wacker with the flag from 1930, but I can trace his gang to that. Now, 1933, that was briefly their headquarters in room 558, but after Capone went to prison. But then they were operating under the leadership of a guy by the name of Frank the Enforcer, who was not really not the one still staying away from the time. Yeah, I got the room 558 to try to you didn't feel like it was not a job we had a long life expectancy, you did get to buy nice underwear while you were here. 
On the right now, 77 Wacker, the United Building, 1990 to Stefano and Partners, and Ricardo Bocchio, the architect. Um, kind of Bruce Bonner and Felipe and the old Bruce agree, columns up along the top, even as a Greek style pediment up there. Four of the columns in the middle extend all the way down, tying the whole building together as endlessly classical and endlessly modern at the same time. I don't think you'll ever go out of style. The right in front of them is this light cone-shaped one. Is the 17th Church of Christ sighted this by Harry Weiss, the guy who did the River Cottages and the Cold Storage conversion. To the right, rising up with the uh, sun just hitting it perfectly right now at the Gold Tower, that is the Carbide and Carbon Building from 1930 by uh, Burnham and Burnham, Daniel Burnham's sons. According to legend, they wanted the place to look like a champagne bottle. And nobody's ever found like a letter where they actually said that themselves, so it might just be an urban legend, but it does look like a champagne bottle. In 1930, that would have been kind of delightfully subversive on their part, too. In 1930, Prohibition was still going on. Champagne wasn't legal. Not that that really stopped anybody in Chicago. Or anywhere for that matter, but it's been estimated the number of places where you can go to get a drink in Chicago just about to triple under Prohibition. Hard to tell for sure. These illegal taverns and speakeasies were not really known for keeping good paperwork. So we have a lot of urban legends, like uh, over here on the right is the Jewelers Building from 1924. According to legend, Capone either owns or frequented a speakeasy under the dome called the Stratosphere Club, which is kind of half true. There was a Stratosphere Club, but not until years after Capone went to prison. The one of those great Chicago stories that isn't necessarily true, but it should be. Look up Sarah Vaughan live after hours at the London House. Just to the right over here, 333 Michigan, the Art Deco is based on the design that came in second when the Chicago Tribune had a contest to see who could design their new office tower. Uh, the window design between the Chicago Tribune building, this one coming up on the left that looks like a uh, looks like a Disney villain castle is what it looks like. Uh, before I get into that, I want to talk about the one next to it with the yellow onion dome, the Intercontinental Hotel. Now, when they were designing that one, they didn't plan to have the onion dome up there. They originally planned to have the roof be a landing pad for 